welcome to the church today we are going to take uh, a look back in the old testament once again in the book of joshua an interesting story uh, this is about a battle the book of joshua we are going to read from chapter 10 onwards and uh, especially we'll harp on chapter 10 and this lovely story unfolds yet again about a battle gibeons have struck a peace treaty with the israelites and uh, the king adonai sedek uh, is now afraid that also gibeons are also uh, in peace treaty with the israelites and king adonai sedek thinks that if the children of israelite could uh, defeat a mighty king like ai and he could also be in trouble and he summons the forces of uh, four of his other friends and brings them together in order to combat or fight against the israelites this read uh, from joshua chapter 10 the title is the sun stands still from verse 1 till verse 6 now adoni zedek king of jerusalem heard that joshua had taken ai and totally destroyed it doing to ai and its king as he had done to jericho and its king and that the people of gibeon had made a treaty of peace with israel and had become their allies he and his people were very much alarmed at this because gibeon was an important city like one of the royal cities it was larger than ai and all its men were good fighters So Adonizedek king of Jerusalem appealed to Hoham king of Hebron Piram king of Jarmuth Japhia king of Lachish and the Beer king of Eglon Come up and help me attack Gibeon he said because it has made peace with Joshua and the Israelites Then the five kings of Amorites the king of Jerusalem Hebron Jarmuth Lachish and Eglon joined forces they moved up with all their troops and took up position against gibeon and attacked it the gibeonites then sent word to joshua in the camp of gilgad do not abandon your servants come up to us quickly and save us help us because all the amorite kings from the hill country have joined forces against us as we read in the story and if you go to the subsequent uh, uh, verses beyond verse 6 you can see that god was with joshua and his army and for the first time in the whole world never again in the it, it happened in the past neither it will happen in the future god listened to the voice of man and made sun stand still so when i read it it was i was struck with though that uh, sun stood still so in favor of man in order to defeat these armies so then only that the lord uh, struck this idea in me to find out as to why this particular battle in israel was so important and israelites have battled and warred against many mightier men mightier cities mightier forces than the five kings uh, that had been summoned by king adonai zedek but this particular battle was so special that sun stood still that the whole creation in heaven the whole modus operandi of heaven froze for a moment of time or even say the whole afternoon until the battle was over and it's so significant and if you can read uh, from Joshua chapter 10 from verse 16 onwards until uh, verse 26 Now the five kings had fled and hidden in the cave of Makeda. When Joshua was told that the five kings had been found hiding in the cave at Makeda, he said, "Roll large rocks up to the mouth of the cave and post some men there to guard it. But don't stop. Pursue your enemies. Attack them from the rear and don't let them reach their cities, for the Lord your God has given them into your hand." So Joshua and the Israelites defeated them completely but a few survivors managed to reach their fortified cities the whole army then returned safely to Joshua in the camp at Makeda and no one uttered a word against the Israelites Joshua said open the mouth of the cave and bring those five kings out to me 
So they brought the five kings out of the cave, the kings of Jerusalem, Hebron, Jarmuth, Lachish, and Eglon. When they had brought these kings to Joshua, he summoned all the men of Israel and said to the army commanders who had come with him, Come here and put your feet on the neck of these kings. So they came forward and placed their feet on their necks. Joshua said to them, Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Be strong and courageous. This is what the Lord will do to all the enemies you are going to fight. Then Joshua put the kings to death and exposed their bodies on five poles. And they were left hanging on the poles until evening. So there Joshua, uh, in the book of Joshua, it explains the Amorites kings executed. So from chapter 10, verse 1 till verse 26, this whole story unfolds. A beautiful story. Joshua fighting the external forces of these five kings. And sun stood still. God heeded the voice of man. And they were almost at the brink of winning. And then news comes to him by his troops that there are five kings those who have fled and now are in hiding in a cave called Makeda. So then Joshua instructs immediately to roll stones, large stones on the cave that the five kings were hiding in so that they would not escape. And also at the same time instructs his troops to go and fight or finish the rest of the battle and don't turn back, utterly destroy each and every one at the edge of the sword and to make sure that those enemies do not go to their stronghold again. Then, after the battle was done and he has struck them with the edge of the sword, he comes, takes these five kings and puts his feet on, his, on their necks and exhorts the Israelites, take courage and do not be dismayed and kills these five kings, hangs them on trees, then till evening takes them down from the trees and puts them back in the cave and rolls large stones. So this is how the story unfolds. And when the Lord struck this idea in me to understand and to dive deep into uh, to find out as to why this battle is so important as the sun stood still. What he began to reveal through the Holy Spirit is to, to search what these five kings stood for. I'll read out the names. So, King of Jarmuth, Lachish, Eglon, Hebron, and Jerusalem. It's King of Jerusalem uh, who summoned his four other friends in order to fight against Joshua. So, if we go through the meanings of these five kings, of these kings that came from these states or the, the particular locations. Jamut stands for exalting death or thinking that death is unconquerable and venerating death that has a supreme power. That's what Jamut stands for. And Lakish is a persistent and a stubborn spirit that they are persistent, that they are recalcitrant, and they think that whatever they say is correct. And the king of Eglon, the city and the place where he represents, is, is a threshing and rolling and indulging in sins. And king of Hebron is to mean alliance united, bound together to commit sin and to do the wrong against the Lord. And king of Jerusalem, Mind you, the Jerusalem uh, that which was conquered by Joshua and the, the children of Israel stands for peace, prosperity, until the Israelites took them into their hands. But before that, King of Jerusalem did not have, did not stand for peace or the attributes and the characteristics of what Jerusalem stands uh, after the conquest of the Israelites. So you can see these five uh, states and the characteristics of the kings that who came together in order to fight, uh, to fight against Joshua. 
And where were they hiding? They were hiding in a place called Maketa. Now, why this particular cave in Maketa was so significant? If you look at the metaphysical meaning of Maketa, Maketa means burning, disobedience, worshipping. Ideally, the five characteristics or the vices that I mentioned about these people, the kings that who came from these places. So it's not uh, merely a story that unfolds that these five kings came together, created an alliance to fight against Joshua, and they hid themselves in a cave called Makeda. If you look at the metaphysical meanings of what these names and the places and the states these five kings came from, and also the place that they were hiding, there's a deeper spiritual revelation that which is very important to you and me, you know, to understand of the times and of uh, our own selves introspectively to understand in order to uh, uh, get exhortations from the Lord. So, as I mentioned, Makeda, the cave that they were hiding in, is called a place of disobedience, worshipping, venerating, in other words, uh, upholding these vices of the of five kings and the states that they uh, were representatives of. So, the rest of the story, as I mentioned in Joshua, putting these five kings behind the cave and rolling the stones, and at the same time finishing the rest of the battle and coming back to execute them. But I'm sure by now that you have visualized this, how this has happened. These five kings uh, being executed, hanging on the, uh, the trees until evening, and at the same time, uh, they have been rolled back to the cave, right? And large stones have been uh, rolled back upon them. So, what is the spiritual significance of this story in our, into our lives right now? The spiritual significance of this story, we can attribute it in two ways. We can consider that it in two ways. One is, if we consider to examine ourselves, one, uh, extrovertly, the other introvertly. In other words, an introspective analysis of ourselves, an extrovert analysis of ourselves. So let me try to explain this in this way. There's always an inner man, a man that thinks and ponders and makes decisions and devises plans in every person. And there's a man that who demonstrates who or she is outward to the others in the society. So there is always two characteristics, distinctively separated. But the inner man is controlled by the heart of the man, that is the flesh, the socks that the man is controlled by. And what we are trying in our journey to perfect ourselves is to reduce the impact of sucks and increase the impact of the Spirit of the Lord in our lives. But most of the times, as we have conflict with the world, the sucks comes forward and inner man is controlled by the sucks, whereas that you can see all these vices that these five kings represented are deeply rooted, inculcated vices in our inner hearts. So, is the lust, the stubbornness, and uh, venerating idols, and thinking that dark horses are better than the light that the Lord shines on us. And there's always negativity, and recalcitrant, and always retaliating. So those vices, which these five kings represented of the states that they came from, are deeply rooted vices in our hearts, out of which spring out the actions or the outward manifestations of our actions through the external man. So introvertly, if we can identify that the root causes of these sins, in other words, I will let me attribute these vices to sins now, the root sin is identified, we can also identify the extension of those root sins in the external through our actions. So that's what's happening in the world right now. So sometimes when we look at certain people, uh, the atrocities that they exercise, and uh, when these people behave in 
in such manner like animals and demons and spirit possessed we see i mean what kind of a devil is this person is because it's it's the, it's the person who is controlled by the introvert the root sins in that person's life which manifest the actions of that person outward so what did joshua do uh by uh confining these five spirits or five sins or five kings into the cave is to to control these the outbreak of these five sins out of the heart and to contain them within introspectively in order to subdue them and to curb their effect that's what joshua did by rolling the stone so that is why we see in uh, psalm david often talks to the lord in let's read psalms 139 verses 23 search me o god and know my heart try me and know my anxieties and david says in such search me o god and know my heart david being such a mighty king a man after our lord's own heart he himself introspectively often searched himself to asking the lord saying search me o lord and know the innermost deepest recesses of my thoughts in my heart so david wasn't even sure of himself in that case that is why he was very candid in psalm 39 23 when he asked for it so if david prayed such a in such a manner how much more you and i should also introspectively look at our hearts can we trust ourselves the one who is preaching to you to bring in this message to me even myself i mean when an external force and external influence comes to me the next minute of course my heart will be inclined to respond in such a manner retaliative manner so imagine a person when you are driving a person cuts across in front of you and you get so angry it's easy for me to just relate this story but i myself have been in such situations where the person uh, drives in front of me uh, suddenly twist or turns and i get so angry i try to overtake that person so what are the thoughts that ran in my heart during that time that manifested the outward execution of the result that i did in order to overtake that person to scold that person and uh, to get into a heated up argument and likewise so this is the introspective analysis that each person should do every day you know day to day in our lives so that is what uh, brother dilan sir keeps on talking and harping about die to inner self search our hearts every day morning to evening and if you die to ourselves from every day as the as the bible says in galatians 2:20 So in Galatians 2:20 as we read my old self has been crucified with Christ in other words my old self with the sarks and the the attributes of the sins of my heart that sarks was controlling has been crucified with Christ and if we die to ourselves from every day so there's no more the vices of those sins of our hearts will spring out in order to manifest in sinful actions outwardly extrovertly from our uh actions so this is the the secret of why Joshua contained these five kings in the cave and rolled up stones in other words we should also attempt to roll up certain stones and controls rolling up the stone means to control so that the kings will not escape and rolling up the stones so the deeply inculcated root sins in our hearts will no longer spring forth the vices which are outside so it is very significant my brothers and sisters just imagine this while the kings are inside the cave and joshua contained them by rolling a stone so that not, nothing from outside could go in nothing from inside could go out at least he took the first step that's the first step even david prayed in psalm 39 23 search my heart lord introspective then put a gap there put a stop there roll up the stone then of course we are not perfect we need to go out and fight the external battle 
there are certain practices there are certain uh, habits that have been inculcated processes uh, cultural adherence traditions things that we do as superstitions those are the vices that stem out of the root sins of our heart so what joshua did was fighting the external army of those kings the kings gave the instructions the external army were fighting joshua first of all rolled up the stone then went and fought against the external army and killed them all so in other words how does it apply to ourselves right now is that once we have identified the root sins in our heart make a conscious effort through the holy spirit you and i can't do it by our by our might or but by our strength we need to do it by the strength of the spirit make a conscious effort to put a stop then go back and change and alter our actions if you have been uh, very petulant and if we are very uh, easy to be angry and if we are lying if we are deceiving if we are involved in certain businesses that are not pleasing to the lord those are actions stemming out of the root sins of our heart so we need to make sure that slowly but steadily those actions are being controlled or eliminated just like joshua for the external uh the soldiers and he instructed very specifically do not allow those soldiers to go to the strong fold again or to the strong hold do not allow them to go back to the heart if they go back they will take fresh instructions from the heart and have a new deviation a new way of doing things because heart is very cunning heart is very shrewd so that's what joshua did by exterminating them then he turned back to the cave okay now i'm dealing with the five kings the root sins that are indwelling in the heart then what did he do he took those kings by that time those only five kings because their armies their outward manifestations have been completely exterminated by the ajot sword as only five kings and put his feet on their necks and exhorted his servants his army mighty army take courage do not be afraid why did he do that because these five kings are harmless right now they couldn't stand up for themselves but what joshua meant that in 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 a supernatural in a metaphysical sense what joshua meant is as long as those five kings are there although they do not have the sword to execute their thoughts their actions what they have deeply rooted in their minds in the in, in their hab- habitual sense is so detrimental is so dan- dangerous that's what joshua meant that's why joshua took them by the neck and thrust them down before killing them so that is why that we need to take these evil things by the neck how do you catch a serpent if you watch nat geo or television to that matter how do you catch a serpent you don't catch a serpent by its body you don't catch a serpent by its tail you catch a serpent by its neck even an eagle taking a serpent catches it by the neck so you have to take these or tackle these root sins by the neck just like Joshua dealt with the five kings in the cave and what else did Joshua do Joshua killed them hung them on trees till evening and took their bodies back back into the cave and rolled stones and i read this i just asked this question from the lord why did he hang them on the tree after a fierce battle thousands or millions would have uh, been killed on that day and previous verses it says that lord struck them through hailstones more than the children of israel struck them with the sword that means there have been millions dead and these five kings are so significant joshua could have just killed them and put them in the cave and rolled up the stones why did he hang them on the trees instead till the evening my brothers and sisters the holy spirit revealed to me is that this is very significant of what our lord jesus did taking over our sins and hanging them nailing them on the cross and he hung himself as a curse on the cursed tree until evening until the ninth hour in mark chapter 15 verse 33 let's read now when the sixth hour had come 
there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour in mark chapter 15 verse 33 jesus himself having absorbed all the sins significant of these five kings and the wises as well and many more and hung himself on the tree till the ninth hour now if you look at the ninth hour converted into our 24 hours that we live in right now is between 3 to 5 pm in the evening and joshua also hung these kings till evening it clear is clearly mentioned uh in verse 26 and after afterwards joshua struck them and killed them and hung them on five trees and they were hanging on the trees till evening just like our lord jesus took all our sins and on the cursed tree hung until he gave up his last breath till evening till the ninth hour as we read in mark 1533 and moreover after they have been taken down from the five trees they were put back in the cave and stones were rolled out in the same manner our lord jesus was taken off from the cross and placed in a tomb in joseph's tomb and a large stone was rolled against the mouth of the tomb until he resurrected on the third day so my brothers and sisters i hope that you see the similarity of the story in joshua and what happened in a spiritual in the physical sense with lord jesus having taken all our sins i did mention about you rolling a stone between the heart and the external that means introvert and the extrovert that's where the separation makes place i also mentioned about the strength that out of our strength and our might that we cannot do this and our lord jesus has already done this for us he took all our sins absorbed it internalized it on our behalf nailed it to the cross hung till evening and suffered that no man has ever suffered and he took those sins along with him to the tomb and rolled the stone so that we shall not have to do it out of our own might we only simply need to obey and accept our lord jesus and reminisce of what he did of his covenant of what he asks us to do keep his commandments keep his statutes and more than anything else keep his covenant keep his agreement so that not of our might and strength but of his strength of what he did that we shall overcome the vices of these five uh, root causes in our lives automatically when we die to ourselves this is what i mean by dying to ourselves from morning to evening to understand our lord jesus has done this for us and then in the end we are liberated because of the victory that he has already given us so i hope i tried my level best to explain this in the most simplest manner but please do take a read uh on the lines that we discussed on uh, and making biblical references to Joshua as well as to uh, Psalms the Galatians and the uh, book of Mark so lord will reveal many more deeper uh revelations to you uh, more than what we discussed so i'm just only uh scratching the surface here and uh, i am just um, only uh, uh stimulating giving a stimulus for you to dive deep into this a story and to get your own personal revelations so until we meet on the continuation of this story and how it applies to another story in the bible next week uh, god bless you